What is up, YouTube? How are you guys doing today? It is me, Ken Amico, aka Ocean Crash. How are you guys doing, man? It's been a minute. Um, I'm sorry, my voice is a little bit raspy. I'm under the weather, so I'm, I think I got the flu or something like that. But it's a pretty rough few days. But let's get into this video. So something's been uh, kind of like brought to my attention over these past few days. It's something that I've been really wanting to talk to you guys about for some time now, and that's the conversation that's been plaguing the intraminets and on YouTube in the financial community, which is credit cards versus non-credit cards. So the, the ability of using credit cards versus cash only. Um, David Ramsey is a huge proponent of cash only purchases. Only cash, he says, debt is dumb and cash is king. That's his motto. Um, and then you have other people on the internet like um, like Graham Stephan or Stephan Graham, Graham Stephan, Stephan Graham, I forgot his name, um, who <laughs> advocate uh, for a credit card lifestyle or Credit Shifu, who is another one who advocates for a credit lifestyle and he's like huge into credit cards. So I'm going to talk to you guys about the pros and cons of having a credit card and pros and cons of having no credit card, so living a cash only lifestyle. Um, so yeah, so kind of going to advocate for both the David Ramsey side and then just advocating for the, you know, having a credit card, um, Graham Stephan. Yeah, I think it's Graham Stephan. <laughs> um, so, so first of all, let's cover the pros of having a credit card. Now the way I'm going to do this is for every pro, I keep hitting my space bar <laughs> for every pro, I'm going to have a con for that point. So um, the number one pro, or we're gonna cover in three on each one, but the number one pro for having a credit card is just the ability of having temporary money. Um, that is just something that is beneficial, not only in times of need, but also in like um, making huge financial decisions. Having temporary cash um, is huge, you know, or what we call credit, um, you know, which essentially can be used as temporary cash. Um, not in the sense of withdrawable as cash, but in the sense of using to make cash purchases. Uh, credit technically is considered temporary money um, or short-term debt, not like a loan, which is considered a long-term debt um, or like a house loan uh, mortgage. So the pro of that, of having a credit card, is you have temporary money. If you ever need money for a tight situation, if you need a you know big boy purchase, you have that temporary cash, or uh, that temporary credit. Uh, but the cons in that is usually uh, that the sense of, in terms of having temporary money, people usually who utilize credit cards or temporary money have a habit of not paying it off and not utilizing it how it should be used. Um, in the sense of your temporary debt, your temporary money becomes a long-term debt. People end up not paying off their credit cards Okay, and it's getting postponed into this thing that just accumulates and accumulates and accumulates and generates interest, interest, interest. And now all of a sudden you're paying 150 bucks, $200 in interest payments because your credit limit is high and your balance is full. So the pros, number one, having temporary money, but the cons is making that temporary money into long-term debt. So you gotta make sure you guys pay off your credit cards when you have your credit card. Like I mean, right away, you make that purchase, bang, pay it off, right, next statement. So that's, that's a temporary card. And for a good way to kind of utilize this step is I recommend using a charge card instead of a credit card. They're great for credit scores and it's also short-term debt. You pay it off right away. Um, but yeah, point number two of having uh, the pro of a credit card is that it increases your credit score, which is great for like big boy purchases, you know, like big purchases, like great for a house, uh, great for a car, uh, great for a loan. If you want like a business loan or an SBA loan or whatever type of loan you're looking for, a mortgage loan or, or um, you know, commercial real estate loan, whatever it is, um, credit score, you know, utilizing your credit, you know, with your available credit revolving around your uh, utilization ratio, which is basically how much credit you've used of your total credit. Um, you know, if that goes up, your credit score goes up and just so many great things behind using a credit card is having a great credit score, which allows you really for companies, big companies to say, hey, this guy, this, this woman knows how to manage their money well. Uh, a credit score, I like to think about it, is uh, your debt score, honestly. Um, if you have a low credit score, that means you, you do a bad job of handling debt. If you have a really high credit score, that means, hey man, you handle your debt very well. So 
the way I like to live my life is if you have a credit card or if you have credit, you pay that off right away. You pay it off right away. You don't let it accumulate. It's a bad mistake. Do not let it accumulate because it becomes a snowball. Um, so what David Ramsey calls a debt snowball, I call a debt snowball in terms of you accumulate debt. In his sense, you pay off debt one step at a time. With credit cards, it becomes like you, you use your credit card. Usually people have a habit of just keep using it, keep using it. If you don't, the rule of thumb is if you don't have that money in the bank account, you don't buy it, buy it on a credit card. If you're trying to buy a TV that's 500 bucks and you only have 200 bucks in the bank account, you don't buy the TV because you can't afford it. You can't pay it off. So you don't do it. Um, it's almost like you think you can use that money in, in that way. Um, so yeah, for like I said, that con for that point for... Uh, increasing your credit scores usually it causes uh, the the habit of teaching Americans that you can only use loans to, to for large purchases and not outright pay them so people usually think that oh um, I have credit um, I've used credit cards and I have a high credit score that means uh, I can only buy a house with a loan and um, because I have a great credit score and because you know, it's impossible to buy off a house. People usually think it's nearly impossible to buy a house with 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100% down payment. People think it's impossible. It's not. <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, my friends and family put down 80%, 90% down payments on their apartments and their houses. So, I mean, it's really not. And, and we kind of get brainwashed into thinking that you can only make large purchases through loans. Um, and that's kind of one of the cons of focusing around your credit score and you know and um, and all of that so uh, it's definitely one of those um, the third pro of having a credit card is you get phenomenal rewards like I'm not gonna lie I have credit cards I have about eight of them and I have about 12 free airplane tickets <laughs> so and they just they just stay there because I hit my spend now I'm lucky enough because my um, my points came from me opening up a business I have a lot of my expenses they just go straight on the credit cards and um, I've been allowed to hit my point credit limits. I have another one for my Chase Sapphire, um, which I actually am not going to show because numbers. But that one's um, $4,000 in spend uh, within three months. Um, and I'm about to hit it right now. December 20th is that three month mark. And I still haven't hit the, the, the $4,000 limit yet. So that's going to come up soon. I have to make that purchase. But I get three free airplane tickets. I get 100, uh, 175,000 points. So that right there is free airplane tickets. And as long as you pay off your balance, just as you normally would a bank account, it's basically a free airplane ticket. Think about it. You spend seventy, you spend four thousand dollars in your bank account. That money's gone, right? Once you spend it, it's gone. I mean, you buy something for four thousand, that money's gone. Why not put it on the credit card, pay off that credit card, okay, and sit and basically get free free tickets, free things, so free rewards. You got to make sure you utilize those rewards. So those are the pros. That's a the third and final pro of having a credit card. But in contrary, um, the con of having that credit card for for the rewards is that um, rewards may cause you to have unbalanced habits, such as loading your credit card to accumulate points. Um, I've heard a lot of people go like, "Oh yeah, I get two percent cash back on groceries, so I just always go to Costco and load up my cart credit card, or I get three percent cash back on electronics this month, so I'm just gonna buy a TV because it's free money." Well, they usually have that mentality, and then they use the points that they accumulated, which end up being like a hundred bucks for a ten thousand dollar credit limit, and all of a sudden they owe ten thousand dollars, and they've only accumulated a hundred bucks in, in rewards. It's like, well. Good luck. You're going to use your $100 in rewards to pay off your $10,000 debt, which leaves you with $9,900 in debt. Not a smart decision, was it? <laughs> so it's all about using your points phenomenally. Points, um, they are a reward for good behavior. Uh, it's not a game where you're taking advantage of credit card companies. Credit card companies have rewards because they know people can't handle debt well. That's why they have rewards. That's the main reason. Think about it. They would not be in business. Credit card companies, loaners, would not would make no money off of you if you just paid off your debt all the time. The reason why they do this is because they know people suck at paying off their debt. They suck at managing money. And that's how they make money off interest. They kill people off interest. So those are the pros and cons of having a credit card. So um, that's going to be the Stefan Graham, Graham Stefan, <laughs> or credit guru side of things. Uh, basically why credit is good 
Now we're going to go to the David Ramsey side of things, pro David Ramsey. We're going to talk about the pros of no credit cards and the cons of having no credit cards. So the first pro of having no credit cards and utilizing no credit is that you teach yourself. The first one is that you teach yourself to pay everything off ahead of time. Um, you want a house, you save up that down payment. Like I was telling you guys earlier, you save up the 80%. If you don't have the money, then you don't have the money. You can't, if you don't have 80 grand, 100 grand in your bank account for that 50% down payment for the $200,000 house, then you don't have the money to buy a house. Like that's just, people have this mentality where they think I don't have enough money so I can just use someone else's money because it's, it's fast, you know? So, I mean, you have to really be careful with what you're doing with your money and you have to realize that you, you have to be patient, you know, with, with, with utilizing, you know, your cash. A lot of people, they think that a quick solution to their low income is credit cards. Well, no, the correct solution to your low income is finding a better paying job. So you don't have to resort on credit cards. It's not a solution to low income. Credit cards are a, a benefit for people who know how to manage their debt. If you don't know how to manage your debt, you don't use credit cards. Don't open a credit card. You know, and that's again, that's the con of teaching yourself to pay everything off ahead of time. The con is larger purchases that you would usually use on a credit card are now longer to obtain. So like a house, you know, if you were to use a loan, get a loan on that, say if you put minimum down payment, maybe 15% or 20%, we'll say, for example, um, that's a lot less. Whereas you were to save up 100 grand for 50% down payment on a $200,000 house, that ends up taking longer. And in theory, you can say it sucks because when you borrow money, you're saving yourself time in the process. So for example, borrowing money to get your car sooner than paying it off in cash, like a car loan or a, a commercial real estate loan, um, these purchases will take longer. Um, so you get more short-term benefit because you get it faster, but long-term you know, pain because you're incurring long-term debt. You have a car payment, you have a house mortgage, you know, off a 20, 30 year fixed. Think about it, people, how people, their house mortgage is usually average 20 year, 20, 30 year fixed. And that's a long time. You want to be, it's like having a student loan on, and a house loan, just like average American has a student loan, 20, 30 year fixed student loan. And, and you throw a house loan on top of that. It's like doubling your expenses, like a thousand dollars a month on average. So larger purchases can delay you. They can take longer so um, tip number two pro number two of having no credit cards is you have more long-term assets you know you pay everything off when you have the money you have no debt meaning yourself your worth your 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 your, your um your value I'm trying to think of the name um your your uh your net worth thank you your net worth is is you have a higher net worth because you have no debt so basically you're all cash you're all cash value and when you when you pay everything off with cash you're not paying interest so the money you have is the money you have it's you have that cash value so it's there for you to kind of play around with um but in in retrospect the con of having long-term assets is that you usually have less short-term assets so that means you know you won't have as you know you'll have money in the account but it won't be as available to you as if you were to use credit cards as a temporary solution, you know, to things. You usually have to spend your money really quick um, for things because you, you don't use credit cards, which in, in, a, in a sense is good in a way um, because you have more long-term assets, which is great. You get your house, you get your car, um, you know, you know, so it's, I mean, it, it goes, it goes hand in hand, you know, you're willing to sacrifice the short-term um dopamine effect of having purchases getting them quick and fast you're willing to sacrifice that for having them in the future but not paying not owing anything for them they're yours you own them outright you don't have to you're not paying the bank monthly for your car note that car is yours that house is yours you saved up for it so you have those assets your your, your personal capital you have more you have more capital so more net worth so that's the pro and con of that and the third pro of having no credit cards and the final pro is you learn patience and how to manage your money. This is how life should be. We should be patient with our money. We should be patient with life and patient with expenses. And I mean, 
the first the first credit card if i'm not mistaken came from macy's or tj maxx they offered it on their catalogs because someone wants to buy something but they didn't have enough money and they're like you know what just give it to them and have them pay you back and that's kind of the concept of i think that was either layaway or credit card it's one of those but i know i got the idea right <laughs> um but yeah it makes you learn patience which is fundamentally who we should be as human beings when it comes to handling finances people think that a solution to not being patient is just borrowing and not using things that don't belong to them well no you're not doing you're not making enough money which is majority of the issue in americans then you find a better paying job i'm tired of hearing these excuses of it's not out there for me there's nothing out there for me that pays my job i'm gonna be stuck like this forever this is just how it is this is just how it is no it's not like people are so negative and think everything is impossible and that this is just their situation this is the cards life dealt them sure keep thinking that while people like myself will come in and sweep the rug from your feet and just make so much money from you because that's the problem people with negative mentalities stay in a negative situation people with positive mentalities tend to promote themselves and be positive atmospheres and tend to grow that's just how it is you learn patience when you have no credit cards and you learn to pay everything cash. You learn to manage your money. You learn to finance. You learn to budget. This is how life should be. You should be an adult and manage your money this way. Now, the con of that is that patience usually leads to the feeling of FOMO or the fear of missing out, F-O-M-O. -O. Um, and everyone is usually, usually using money incorrectly. Usually, the average American uses money incorrectly. So the odds of your friends, your colleagues, or whomever it is, um, uh, the odds of them using their money incorrectly is high, meaning they're going to go on vacations more than you. They're going to have buy new cars more than you. They're going to buy houses more than you because it's not their money. So they may be getting the, the enjoyment of, of physical, tangible goods, but in reality, they don't really have those items. They don't belong to them. So you may get the feel of you're missing out, the feel of FOMO, but in the long run, you're in a way better position than them, way better position than them. So um, these are my pros and cons of, of having a credit card and pros and cons of not having a credit card. So I am, I am a proponent personally of having credit cards, but using them wisely. I'm kind of in between. I'm kind of like a fence sitter, if you will. I think credit cards are good, but only for the right people. If you cannot, if you do not know how to manage your debt, or if you do not know how to hustle for your money, then don't get credit cards. Personally, I use credit cards for my business and business loans because I, I, I decided I didn't want to take out a loan, so I use my credit cards instead of opening up a loan. Um, personally, um, but I'm paying off my credit cards as they are, and I a lot of it, none of it is personal debt, so um, it's not like tvs and stuff like that you know it's all for opening up a business which is a long-term asset if you will short term you're not going to get much profit off of it so I, i'm a proponent of having a credit card if you know how to have it, manage your money if you're good with that type of stuff to sticking to a budget if you're really bad at that don't get a credit card it's just going to make your situation a lot more worse guys i love you so much thank you for tuning into today's episode of before we work this is my take on credit cards david ramsey versus stephen graham graham stephan slash credit shifu um credit cards battle it out this episode i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, again sorry if my voice is really bad i'm sick uh, i have the flu and i just really wanted to push out this video for vlogmas um yeah, I think that's it. I finally posted up the minimalism challenge video, day 30. That was the last day of minimalism challenge. I'm going to follow up with a my opinions on the minimalism challenge. Um, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys so much. Till later, till next time. Anakhlapo khon mukhibi. Till later. Bye. Peace. Woo.